Hello, it's Michelle and I am back today to talk about my National Novel Writing Month bullet journal. No November is National Novel Writing Month and uh, there's a nonprofit organization that um, kind of puts on a support group for people who try to write a novel in a month over the course of November. Uh, and there's a bunch of people that do that. I mean like literally millions of people do it. And one of the keys to success is planning. So of course I use my planner system to do that. Now this is going to be my fifth nano. Uh, and so I kind of end up doing some of the same prep work over and over again. So I thought, well, you guys know I normally use a uh, composition traveler style journal um, for my bullet journal. So I use these composition books and I always have one that is my, uh, my writing bullet journal. And I have a video on um, this system. If, that, if you're interested in that, I will link it in the description box. Uh, but of course, you know, I do things in here and then I finish it and it gets put away. And by the time next, uh, November rolls around, I'm in a different one and I end up kind of writing the same things over and over again. So, but so I recently found these hardcover journals at Costco three for $12, which is an amazing price. Um, I just reviewed them too. I will link that in the description box. And I thought, well, instead of writing like a lot of the same stuff over every year, maybe I should just have a dedicated NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month journal. Uh, and put all of the stuff in there that I um, that I use every year and then add in each year um, my current project and that way I don't have to rewrite a bunch of stuff. So I thought I would just quickly show you guys my uh, NaNoWriMo bullet journal. So um, this book belongs to Paige obviously and then of course always um, I am now a big believer in indexes even though I wasn't when I first started. I have learned, I have been converted, I understand the value now. Um, I tend to always leave a first one spread um, blank. Uh, it's kind of like an info dump page but you know there's always something you need and you, I can always find a blank page right really quickly at the beginning so I like being able to do that and not have to worry about if it's going to be in the middle of something else I'm doing. Alright so the first actual page, um, this is 5X structure and it's a graphic, I will link down below where you can get this graphic because um, it's not mine, I did not create it. And this is one of the tools that I use when I'm first sitting down to plot a novel and I kind of check in as I'm writing the novel as well um, because a kind of a quick way to jog an outline for me is um, if I can come up with a scene for my inciting incident, my first major plot point, my midpoint, second major plot point, or a later major plot point that involves a crisis point. Um, and then my climax, then I've got a, a pretty basic outline, but it's a really good starting point. And um, I've actually done NaNoWriMo where I've just pretty much had uh, those five scenes, or maybe I, I think usually I do somewhere between five and ten. This year is the first year I'm actually outlining a little bit more before um, I go into it. But so this kind of breaks it down and reminds me what I'm trying to do and helps me break down that story when I'm first sitting down to think it through. Um, this this is actually an, a, a similar version. It kind of maps on, but it's different that I went to a presentation by Angie Powers um, and she uh, did a presentation about how you go from ordinary world to new ordinary world. So the protagonist's life is this. And then by the time you're done, there's a new life and all of the steps in between. And this is another way that for me, for my brain, it works really well to get me thinking about what I want to accomplish over the course of the story and what scenes are going to go along with that. So this is a good thing I like to check in on and, and think about as I'm writing as well as when I'm planning. On my next page here, this is called The Reader's Emotional Journey. This is another thing that um, really helps me in terms of keeping track of what I'm trying to do at each point in the book and what scenes I need. So this just basically shows what sort of emotions or reactions you're trying to get from your reader at each stage of your book from beginning to middle to end. Um, so at first, you know, they've got a little bit of curiosity and this moves, you know, through these different things. We'll link um, the source of where I got this. A blank page Page, uh, just because since this only took up one page I figure I'll need something that just needs one page so I left that blank. Uh, this page is dedicated to um, things to think about in order for me to get to know my characters. So there's lots of like inventories out there that you can give your characters different questions to ask them. This is a little bit more story based. Uh, it underlines kind of the plot so these are things like define each character's inciting incident um, what does each character want? So what's their goal? What are they going to do to achieve that? What obstacles crop up along the way? And like even if you just know the answers to that, you've got a pretty good starting point for plotting out your, uh, your story. So these are just questions that I use that help me kind of get to know what my character's journey or what their arc is going to be as I'm trying to plot out the novel. 
so if at any point I get stuck and I'm not quite sure like where to take it, I can kind of go through this and um, this can jog, you know, the next steps that I need for my character to take. Simil oh, and I should say that this, uh, the, the next couple of pages are things that I've sort of conglomerated together from different sources. Some of it is original, but very little, especially of this page, is original. So again, I will link down below um, where I got this information because it is most of it did not come from my head. Um, this is a little bit more from my head, but still it, it came from a couple of other sources as well. And this is getting to know your plot. If I just go through these steps, I'm going to have a pretty focused outline for starting my book, but that's not too restrictive, so I can still have that kind of joy of discovery. So basically this says just create at least three plot elements um, as they're going to occur. So your inciting incident, the obstacle to solving that problem, and then your resolution. Then create at least three events that show your character development, so what their initial state is, some failure that they have to achieve their goal, um, and then steps to awareness of um, what they need to learn in order to achieve that goal. And then if for each of those, even just six um, events, I, I list what characters are present, where the scene is located, whether that is going to be a central storyline scene, a subplot scene, backstory scene, what primary goal I want each of those scenes to accomplish, what secondary goals I can get them to accomplish. Then I write a one to two scene, sentence summary of what happens in each of those events. Poof! I have an outline um, and enough of an outline that I'm going to be able to function um, in NaNoWriMo. So this is something I'm going to go back to every year um, when I'm starting out NaNoWriMo or for the in, in the rest of the year when I'm thinking out a new book that I want to get to work on. Uh, similarly, getting to know your structure. So this just talks about, you know, put your events in the, the chronology of how they actually happened, then put them in events of how you want to tell the tale or rearrange them for maximum emotional uh, effect. Uh, so it just gets you thinking about stuff like that for your structure. That's another thing that I um, kind of go through. Now this is from um, Boho Berry. And again, I will link down below. So this is actually sort of a Frankenstein of the NaNoWriMo tracker she made for this year and the one she did for last year. Last year she did this so there's, uh, you know, you can, there are these different books that you can color in as you meet their goals. And I like coloring. I don't know why. So that, um, I found that really fun last year. And then this chart just helps you, um, you can put like what your plan is for each day. And then you can plot out what you actually achieved. I'm probably just going to use it for my actual what I achieved each day so I can see kind of what I'm doing and where I need to go. But I think I've mentioned in my other videos that there's something about like at the end of the day just writing down the progress that I've made that makes me feel like I'm getting there and that keeps me motivated. Um, on the one that she did this year, she has this here, a re weekly progress matrix that I've changed up a little bit and I kind of smooshed it in because I wanted to be able to fit this awesome bookcase as well. So this is going to be tracking my progress as I write this November. Um, this is my NaNoWriMo 2017 checklist. So these are all of the things that I need to do before uh, November gets here. So these are logistic things. One of the tricks that I use um, so that I don't have to cook as much during November when I know I'm going to be you know, trying to write a lot is uh, during the month of, of September and October, I cook a little extra, freeze things up so that for um, November, luckily my husband is very happy to eat leftovers that we unfreeze. So that's going to get us through a lot of November. I prep blog posts because I also have a nail blog and this way I will have some blog posts that go up and I don't actually have to write them uh, during the month and I can focus on the novel. Uh, and uh, along with that, I have some reviews and some nail swatching that I have to do that I want to have be finished and ready to go um, by November so I can get going. Set up my profile on my nano site. That's done. I need to prep my journal. That is now done. So I'll be able to check that off after today. Um, I also plan um, some events around a National Novel Writing Month every year. So I do a Preptober event and then I usually do two write-ins. Uh, and so I've done all the planning and the notification of everybody for that. Uh, then my pre-planning, um, so some character work support, uh, character work for my main character, for my two main support characters, and for my antagonist. I've done a lot of the main character work. I haven't done this. I still have to do that before we get going and I start writing. I've researched my locations. I've planned out all my basic plot points. I've planned most of my basic character arc points. I've done all the ones for the main character, but I still have to do for the supporting characters. Um, then I'm going to write out kind of my official outline. I have finished my logline for what I want the book to be about. 
Um, I'm going to be doing some uh, cooking for this Thanksgiving, so I need to go ahead and plan out what I'm going to be doing and fit that into my timeline. And then um, this is a new genre that I'm writing this month. It's sort of supernatural horror. Uh, so I've been reading a, a bunch of different books. It's something I've always enjoyed, but I've never written before. So there were two books in particular that I wanted to read before I started writing this um, just to get a little bit more of a sense for how, you know, the expectations of the genre. So I'm, I've almost finished one. I got to hurry up and finish that next one. Uh, okay, so here is the kind of standard Bujo um, monthly tasks list, you know, for, for each day of the month. And this brings me to a point. If you're going to get these books, this, this is a letterbox journal. I got it from Costco. Uh, I discovered a shortcoming of this, which is there are not 30 lines. So if you're doing 30 or 31 days in your month, you are going to want to start it definitely up here above the first uh, line. And then you're probably going to have to smoosh your 30 and your 31 down here. For me, not a big deal. I don't care about having the perfect number of days in a perfect order, so that's fine. And I also um, started made the mistake of starting this with um, Halloween Day because for me, I kind of see that as the start of Nano since as the clock strikes midnight on Halloween um, evening, I go on ahead and, uh, and I start writing. Um, but if I had been smart enough to count these before, I would have realized I couldn't do that and I would have done it a little bit differently. So if you get these notebooks, keep that in mind when you're drawing out your spread. Um, that's just there because that's some personal information. Now I have my nano tracker, but I know that for this book, I, I'm going to want to write more than 50,000 words. And, um, I actually, when I, when I do a fair amount of pre-planning, I, I actually write pretty well. So for both of the last two nanos, I finished, um, about the middle of the month. So my for my totals for each of those months came into about sixty five thousand. So I just want to track um, how how much I how much I finish and when I'm going to be putting the dates in here, uh, and so I can keep myself motivated once National Novel Writing Month is done and get to my projected hopefully ninety thousand words by the end of the year. Um, this page is blank. It's for a project diary. What I want to do is I'm going to kind of write down what I'm feeling each day or every couple of days as I'm doing nano because um, you know you always hit slumps or there's things where you know things aren't going really well and I think that looking at that next year and remembering oh I did have those that difficult day but then the next day I, the muse just hit and I wrote like crazy um, can kind of keep me motivated and it's just like a good diary of the writing process so I wanted to do that this year and then my last spread here is for um, inspiration, and this is actually a multiple page spread, so it goes for three pages, because or four pages, because what it is, is for each day, I give myself a quote and then a prompt. Now, I probably won't necessarily need the prompt, and I might not even necessarily need the quote. Like, especially at the beginning, I may just be like, writing, 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 writing. But you never know, like, which day is going to hit, and, and you're just going to be in a slump. And maybe the quote for day seven is exactly what I'm going to need to remind myself that, hey, you know, Ernest Hemingway said the first draft, uh, draft of anything is going to be crap. And, um, you know, he said it a little bit differently. But, but just to remind myself that my writing doesn't have to be perfect, and just to keep writing. Um, and then I give myself a little prompt. So if I'm not quite sure where to get started, to know, okay, I want to insert some subtext into something that I'm writing today. And that will hopefully um, get some ideas going that can get me writing my next scene and jumpstart me on the day. So I've gone through and I've picked out a quote and a prompt for each of my days. So if and when I need them, they're going to be there for me. Um, and I like the fact that this is in here now that I've done it, boom, because then for every nano from now on, these are always going to be there. And notice my traveling shovel of death, you fellow nanoers will know what that is. That has made an appearance because, you know, by day 25, you may just need to use the traveling shovel of death. And I did use it one year. And then I left a space for any like bonus prompts that I stumble across or think of that um, I think are really uh, useful. And I don't do prompts like, um, oh, your character found a quarter, write about it, or something like that. I tend to do things like add time pressure to an obstacle in your story. So um, that's very general for any story or any kind of thing that I'm trying to write. So as I kind of come up with or stumble across other ones, I'll be able to put them there. And then as for things that I've pre-planned out, that's it. Now I'm going to go through and for the rest of my character work, I'm going to either write it in here or I will start you know, writing other notes or... Uh, whatever I need to do um, during this novel. And then next year, so maybe I use this much, next year I will start with my NaNoWriMo 2018 tracker. And that way I'll have 
all of this stuff here at the beginning. Oh, and I should also say that um, this journal did not come with this pen loop. I added that in because I know I'm going to want to keep a pen with this journal at all times. So if you are a writer, um, and particularly if you're doing National Novel Writing Month, I hope that something in here um, is useful for you. And like I say, I will link all my resources down below. And thank you for watching. Hello, Kitty. Do you want to say hello? Say hello. Mm. Say hi. Um, if at any point I get stuck here and I want to... Oopsies. <laughs>